Over the past few years, the mid-size SUV segment in India has absolutely exploded. Sales have gone through the roof and the current products competing in the segment are doing record numbers. So it's no surprise that as part of Skoda's India 2.0 program, the first car that comes out is a mid-size SUV. It's been highly anticipated, it's been in the works for nearly four years and finally the Kushak is here. What do we think of its design? What do we think of what the product offers? How it drives and what can you expect from the Kushak? Well, you're about to find out in this review from rainy, sweltery, hot Maharashtra. But look at the surroundings around us. It's a beautiful day and we have a beautiful car to drive. You're watching the AutoX YouTube channel. You can also get your daily dose of all things automotive on our website, autox.com, and follow us on social media. Don't forget to check out our monthly magazine and make sure to hit the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. As you can see by the state of the Kushak and me, the weather has not been too kind to us today. The monsoon has been playing hide and seek all day, which makes shooting this video very difficult. But what's good is that it makes assessing the dynamic abilities of the Kushak much easier and much nicer. But I'll come to that later. First up, design. Now, design is a very important part of any product and especially when you're trying to enter a very competitive segment like the midsize SUV. And I have to say at first impressions, the Kushak is one hell of a looker. Sure, the honey orange shade helps. It attracts a lot of attention from people. I also like the restrained use of chrome. You see this trademark Skoda grill here. Uh, yes, it's got a big chrome outline, but I think it looks very well integrated, especially when you see the chrome elements into the headlights and the fog lamps. So I would say the front of the car, quite distinctive, quite aggressive in your face, which for this segment is very necessary. 17 inch wheels, dual tone. This is the top of the line model. That's why you get 17 inch alloy wheels on the mid trims. You get 16 inch alloys while on the base models, you will be getting 16 inch steel wheels with wheel caps. But I think the wheels are very smart. Uh, this Skoda badging here is quite nicely done. It's a nicely integrated element into the profile of the car. Again, restrained use of the chrome. That's great. Big window line, quite distinctive, very easy to look out of. Strong shoulder lines running here, which are quite nice. Uh, I think the roof rails look quite good. The contrast of the silver roof rails with the rest of the car works quite well. The cladding is also very prominent to make the SUV look a bit more butch. Look like something that can go off-road. It can't really. But yes, it gives it that visual element. The rear of the car is probably my highlight. The tail lights work well. These elements are very well integrated. Again, restraint use of the chrome. I like the Skoda badging. It's nicely done. It's not overtly in your face. Kushak badging is good. Overall, I would have to say the Kushak scores very well on style, maybe an 8 or a 9 out of 10. But there is one element that is there, the visual size, actually the physical size too. It does not look as big as the Creta when it comes to the length of the car or the height of the car. And that is also a fact because it's not as big as the Creta, it's just slightly smaller. So that could be something that could stand out to a few consumers. But once we get inside, let's find out if it's as practical as the Creta and how it fares for interior room and the interior design. Now the interior design of a car is also very, very important. And I think here the Kushak scores very well. The overall theme of the interior, this gray and black twin tone theme with these lovely seats. I think I quite like it. I'm not a fan of beige, so I'm very happy it's not beige. I would have preferred all black, but yes, I could live with this gray and bash. I really like this detailing here, this kind of geometric 3D pattern that's been done on the dashboard. That works quite well. I love the screen here, it's high resolution, it looks really good, it responds very well to the touch and the UI of the new Skoda apps and the whole ecosystem is quite well designed, so it's quite easy to use. Of course, you don't get a digital instrument cluster, but I'm a fan of analog gauges anyway and I don't really miss it. You do get an MID screen that displays all the relevant data. You know, when I first saw the steering wheel, these two spoke steering wheels, which are all the rage when it comes to design now. I thought I, that's something that I'm not really going to enjoy while I'm driving, but I have to say I really like how it works. It's just the right thickness. Uh, it's, it's very easy to use. It feels like a high quality item, especially these chrome bezels are very easy to control. And overall, I think the UI of the whole cabin has been designed very well. The layout is very thoughtful. You get ventilated seats. Uh, you get climate control system with these touch sliders that you can adjust. 
I don't think I'm a big fan. You know, it, it, even with the touch, you have to take your eyes off the road to adjust the fan speed or the temperature of the climate control. You get four USB outlets on the upper model of the car that we are driving. Uh, if you are a fan of USB-A, that which means you still use an older cable or an older phone, well, that is available on the base trim models. You also get lots of smart Skoda touches inside the car. You like you get this windshield clip which holds your sticker which is holding our fast tag right now you get these really useful spaces in the doors you can store big bottles uh, you get lots of all these touches you get a, a, a net guard to mount your sort of bags inside the boot so all those smart skoda touches are very well integrated and very smartly thought out i also love the front seats like i said they're ventilated they're very comfortable they also offer you a lot of bolster support the under thigh support is just perfect for my height and i think full marks to skoda for that and like the exterior you also see very restrained use of the chrome inside the cabin like the highlight here in the dash like the highlights on the air vents uh, like the highlights on the steering so I think overall, I would say a very well designed interior, very practical, quite an interesting color theme. This orange piping, you know, just gives it a bit of flair. The big question also is, you know, in the front seat, there's enough headroom, shoulder loom, leg room. The seats are comfortable. How is the rear seat? That's going to be a million dollar question. How big is the boot? Let's find out right now. And here we are in the rear seat of the Kushak. Well, at first impressions, the driver's seat is set to my preferences. And as you can see, there's ample amount of knee room available. There's also an ample amount of headroom available. People till about six feet of height should have no problem at all adjusting here. So yes, while the Kushak does look slightly smaller than the Creta, it also is if you compare dimensions. I think interior room is more than sufficient for four adults. Yes, unlike the older Skoda cars that were based on MQB platform, there used to be a very pronounced tunnel here in the rear floor that has been reduced greatly. So the third passenger, the middle passenger in the rear seat will have a much better time adjusting. But I would have to say, given the width of the Kushak, five passengers, three passengers in the rear, uh, three full size adults, that is, is still a tight squeeze. Two are much more comfortable. And despite what we saw in the style that the car looked slightly smaller, Actually, I would think for four full-size adults, the Kushak has more than enough space and would be very comfortable on a long journey. Now, we've looked at many aspects of the Kushak already. We've seen that it's a really good-looking design. We've also seen that while it's on the smaller sides for its segment, the space management inside the cabin is really stellar. It has enough space for four adults in absolute comfort. Five can fit. It's got a pretty decent sized boot. And all the Skoda touches that make, uh, you know, unique touches such as the special bottle holder, the ticket holder, all that make the interior a nice place to be. I personally quite like how the interior looks and the feature set the Kushak offers. For instance, there are a lot of connectivity options now, including an app that tells you all about your car, about the geofencing, about the fuel efficiency, about the fuel levels, all the usual connectivity options that you get today. Uh, you also get uh, inbuilt apps such as the Ghana app you can use for music and many others that you can use for your everyday connectivity with the car and with your cell phone. I love the fact that it has wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, which means I don't need to take a cable. Uh, another good part is that it's got a wireless charger. So yeah, everything as far as connectivity works, as far as features work, it's very, very competitive for the segment. One thing that the competition might offer, which is slightly above the Kushak, is a panoramic sunroof. But like I've said time and again, in India, a panoramic sunroof is about, you know, pretty much useless, to be honest. You're just baking your car and doing nothing else and adding cost to the car. So I, I'm pretty happy with the sunroof that the car has. Now, coming back to the main aspect of any car for me is driving. And before I go out into how the Kushak drives and what engine and transmission options it has, I would like to talk a bit about the platform, you see, because that's very significant. To develop the Kushak and the other products that Skoda is going to launch and also Volkswagen is going to launch in India, they've specially created a platform for India which is based on their global MQB platform. MQB, that's very important. Those three letters stand for a lot of things. Why? Because the MQB is a very highly acclaimed platform. We've seen cars of all sizes on that in India already. Some of the cars we are huge fans of, such as the Superb or the Octavia, both of which drive beautifully. So there's a lot of expectation from the Kushak. Obviously, it's been modified for India to localize the platform to make it more 
suitable and robust for indian conditions and obviously to bring the cost down you know because cost is of course going to be a very important factor in the kushak success or lack thereof so yeah mqv ao in platform it's called that's the indian version uh, it's very stiff it's modular so you can expect a notch pack and a sedan to come on this you can also expect the volkswagen tiguan based on the same platform the kushak at launch will offer two engine options 1 liter petrol 3 cylinder turbocharged of course tsi technology as skoda calls it also the 1.5 liter 211 evo engine that's also featured on the skoda karok again tsi engine turbocharged four cylinder the engines offer 114 bhp from the 1 liter and about 148 bhp from the 1.5 liter and both because they turbocharged also offer a lot of torque 178 nm in the case of the 1 liter 250 nm in the case of the 1.5 liter So what does it translate on the road? Well, one more thing: it, both the engines are available with six-speed manual gearboxes, and this is one of the best manual gearboxes I've driven in a long time. The throws are shift, very precise, can be used very fast, and the box is a delight to operate. I simply love driving this manual gearbox. Uh, in an earlier prototype drive, I've also driven the automatics, but that is not something that's available today. We'll bring you the. automatic versions of the kushak the full review of that soon enough but today we are going to concentrate on the 1.5 liter manual uh, of course one more word about the gearbox is the 1 liter automatic will be a normal slush box as they call it the torque converter whereas the 1.5 liter will be a dsg coming back to the 1.5 liter engine that 148 bhp the kushak's not a very big car sounds impressive How does it feel on the road? Well, I have to say it feels really good. Yes, there's one slight issue with the engine. There's a significant amount of turbo lag. So below 2000 rpm, there's not much power. There's not much response. You have to wait for the engine to rev up to 2000. But once it's above the 2000 rpm mark, right till the 6000 rpm deadline, the engine simply pulls like a train. The 250 nm of torque is spread across a very wide power band, and the engine just relentlessly pulls. no matter which gear you are in and you know on these twisty roads outside bombay i really enjoyed the combination of the manual gearbox and the powerful engine uh, one more feeling that you get out of the kushak is that the steering is really really nice it's been brilliantly set up there's a lot of communication it's very direct you can rely on it completely yes the effort of the steering is a bit too light for me you know most customers drive cars like the kushak in city on highway they want a light steering i would have liked a little more heft to the steering effort but it's not a deal breaker i can live with this and just the communication from the steering is fantastic combine that with the really stiff platform which is the mqb and i think the stellar the most stellar aspect of the kushak's driving is the suspension setup whether it's high speed whether it's low speed whether it's broken roads whether it's fast express ways and fast tarmac the kushak suspension setup is phenomenally well set up the high speed stability is fantastic the low speed ride is fantastic you can throw it into corners at 100% without worrying about it if you have to brake in an emergency maneuver of to or have to brake hard you don't have to worry about the kushak stepping out or any kind of shenanigans it's just sure footed tight down and it feels like a german product which also communicates very well with you so What do I think of the Kushak overall as a package? Well, I think it's a really, really good package. In fact, I would go as far as saying that this is probably my driver's choice car of the segment, the my driver's SUV of the segment. It certainly drives better than the Seltos and the Creta, and that's just at first impressions. I'm sure we'll do a more comprehensive review and get you more details about it. It also offers a very competent feature set. Yes, it misses out on a few things. and i think overall that makes for a phenomenal package a new car a well built car a good looking car a powerful car and a true driver's suv those are some very powerful aspects of it can things be improved yes there is one big problem with the kushak which will be that it offers no diesel engines and in today's stratospheric fuel prices petrol only could turn away a few customers but i have to tell you both the petrol engines are simply fantastic you might think the 1.5 is more needed because you might need the power but my initial impression of the 1 liter when i drove it earlier at the prototype drive was that that would be more than enough for most customers and that would be 
a good factor because you don't necessarily have to have the big engine. You can have the smaller engine, get better fuel efficiency. So I think it offers a very competitive package. Yes, the turbo lag could be a bit less. Yes, it could have a couple of other features. And yes, it could have a diesel. But largely, the basic message of the Kushak, driver's SUV, amazingly fun to drive, well built, good feature set. And if you're looking for an SUV around the four, four and a half meter mark, you would be stupid not to consider the Kushak as your top three choices in the Indian market. With two small caveats, initially for the first month, that is July, the Skoda will only be offering the Kushak with the one litre engine, the 1.5 litre is still getting into production, mass production, and that will come in August. Second, we still don't know the pricing. We'll know that on the 28th when Skoda formally launches the Kushak in India. But I expect the pricing to be very competitive given that over 95 or up to 95% of the parts of the Kushak will be made in India. And if they price it right, I think Skoda definitely have a winner in their hands.